We're off the farm, guys. It's uh, one of those rare occasions where we've managed to escape off Paul Pang Farm for an hour or two. Won't be much more than that today. And it's a two-pronged mission. So first off, we're here to get some free compost. We all like something for nothing, don't we? I'll show you in a minute, but we're backing on to where farmers deliver all their cassava. And then this is a, like a processing plant where they basically cut it and dry it in the sun. And when they turn it over with the tractors, it creates, you know, like very small pieces, uh, some dust and that sort of stuff. When they collect it all up, that bit is left and they just push it to one side. And behind the camera, as we speak, there's a, there's a huge mound of it. And it's actually come over their boundary wall now. So uh, it's all right for the public. Well, hopefully it is for us to go and grab it. So we're going to put a load in the back. Second prong attack is to get, get in for the... Uh, for the goats, the Lucina, uh, but we've shown you that before. But it's where we're going to hopefully cut it today that um, I want to show you. And it's I found it quite shocking the first time I saw it, shocking and definitely saddening. And it's created quite a quite a dilemma for us. Well, in particularly for me, and um, the, the implications that it that it sort of like uh, put upon us. So I'm going to show you that afterwards. But first off, let's go and get some free compost. Throw it in the back of the car and then we'll show you the Gatin area. As you can see, the road is quite narrow here, and although it doesn't look like a major road, uh, we do get a little bit of traffic down here, so we've tried to do this as quick as possible. Toon's done about 30 buckets or so. And I'll just show you where we've been getting it from. Uh, this isn't soil, this is all from dried cassava. Cassava skin, Toon says. And it's just broken down a tree. So we're going to mix that with our inoculated biochar and our goat manure. Apply a top dressing to it, like a top mulch, and that's going to be for our raised beds. As most of you will know, our topsoil is horrendous on the farm. So we've gone for lots of raised beds, which we we need to do an update video on because they've only just been finished really. So we're into the stages of just filling it up. Once this is in, I'll be transplanted quite a bit later this afternoon, early evening, and, uh, and then start sowing some seeds tomorrow, hopefully. Nice one. Right, let's go on and show you the second bit that I was on about. It's a bit dusty and dry. Well, we're here. I can't say it's a romantic location that I've brought my wife to. Uh, it's the <laughs> it's the local tip. Let's have a butcher's. Now, as with most tips, it's uh, full of rubbish. But on the back of this landfill area, all around here. Is all get in now we're not sure how easy it's going to be to get across to it to cut but we're not showing you that guys uh and we're not showing you what Thai people throw out as rubbish either we're here because it's always been a concern of mine what do we do with our rubbish back at the house we really do recycle everything as much as possible and every i don't know month and a half or so uh, we get about 200 baht for recycled bottles and whether they're glass or plastic uh, we don't recycle cardboard because we use that in the garden as a as a mulch but of course it's these things it's the plastic bags and this colored plastic the recycled people don't touch it along with a few other bits and bobs so what do you do about it when Toon came down here with her mum first to cut some good in she was like oh we found a place that's got quite a lot it's the local tip. I thought, oh, it's brilliant. There, there, there's, there's the, the place to take all our rubbish uh, that can't be recycled. However, when we came down here, you could smell it a mile away. Not, not the rubbish. This isn't where people just bring their rubbish. This is where the rubbish that's collected by the dustmen bring it. And you can see, guys, all they do is torch it. And let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six smouldering fires of plastic. The first time we came down here, 
uh, there was a couple of people on Ben Hur chariots like we have, and they were picking through all the rubbish, obviously just taking stuff for recycling, which I thought was brilliant. Well, that's that's less landfill, but then you see all this. So it begs the question, what do you do with your rubbish that can't be recycled? Now, there are places in Thailand that recycle all these plastic bags, but we haven't got any anywhere remotely near us. Perfect vlogging skills, guys. True to form, Lee forgot to charge the camera up yesterday and it, it dropped out halfway through the, uh, the rubbish tip footage, which probably isn't a bad thing, is it? You've seen one rubbish tip, you've seen them all. So it's the morning after the, uh, the little sortie that we went on yesterday. It is proper, proper cold. I've got my willy warmer on and uh, I've got my Babcocks out. I'm not being rude, it's my Babcock mug. That, that's linked to something that I'm going to talk about uh, in a little bit. So yesterday was quite a successful sortie for us. We got various bits and bobs. We got the food for the goats, which you've seen before, so I won't show you them noshing on that. Well, they've had it all anyway, because like I said, it's the morning afterwards. Uh, but we've got a couple of other things. You know, it's like when you're at a rubbish tent, or like Stig of the Dump, I had to get something for nothing, otherwise I feel like I've, I've wasted the opportunity. Let's go and have a look. Hey, I'm getting into my desert rose. Apologies for calling it a desert flower, guys. That's uh, I'm still getting to grips with, with the old flowers and plants names. This is a cracker. We've already had one bloom from it. They're looking good. Right, the smalls are out there. We've got a little bit of firewood for Toon, so she hasn't got to do any chopping and sawing wood. It's nothing to shout about though. And we found a shed load of door frames, but it's hardwood. You can see there's no termite damage. So I've snaffled all that, and that's pretty good for numerous building projects that we've got coming up. Could even be making an appearance in our uh, Swiss Family Robson treehouse, whenever that'll be. All right, I've made headway last night, but I had to give up under the, the cover of darkness of my compost. So I took about half out and I want to show you where I've been putting it in. Look at this everywhere. Back to brown now. We had a few months of it going green when the rains came. We've had about, I don't know now, I'm, I'm probably guessing about a month and a half of no, no rain. Everything's browning off and drying out. Now, I don't know whether the camera can pick it up, but underneath the coconut tree there and about there's two white dots that's thunder and nike they let themselves out in the morning quite independent those two this whole area is under a transformation but check out me raised bed it's still not complete the guys are going to make smooth on the outside so that's got a layer of pretty poor quality topsoil underneath uh, and then ra uh, rabbit manure, it, certainly not, goat manure, uh, inoculate, inoculated charcoal, uh, a little bit of chicken muck in there, and then all the compost that we got yesterday. So there's a nice thick layer there. I'm not going to plant up until the, the guys have made smooth on the outside. We're not bothering on the inside. So it's been a godsend. Our topsoil here is, as you know, terrible. I mean, look at this stuff. So that's gone underneath. I still want the plants to actually have access to that because although it's really, really poor quality and as much that there's no organic matter in there, there there's still be some degree of minerals in there that they need access to. I'm going to transplant all my garlic chives into here. Lots of other bits and bobs that I've been starting off. Uh, I'm not taking all the stones out, but um, just the stuff on the top, bits like that. So it was getting a bit late last night. If your land is a little bit like ours, guys, then... Look for these companies, these processing plants, because they have to, they have to get rid of all this stuff. There was a, a huge pile that we weren't allowed access to. Start of the rain season, the amount of mushrooms in there. You see all the locals getting in there. Uh, so it's, it's obviously good. If there's mushrooms growing in it, you know there's some food in there for them for, to some degree. Uh, there's probably not much food content in there for, the, for your plants. So we've added a lot, a lot of manure to it, and a lot of biochar. So. It's as dry as bloody Ethiopia, though. 
So it, that's going to have to have some serious water in and a real thick top mulch in there. So that's the end of the uh, the good news. Well, apart from that, there's endless supply of that, so we're going to be getting much, much more uh, because this year we're going to be doing loads of um, vegetable growing. Uh, we've got quite a few fruit trees at the moment, but we will be expanding that as well. It's something that we've been quite slack on, but time just hasn't really permitted or we, we thought we we use our time more sort of with the goats but there's been a huge development with that we've still got all the coats uh, but it's to do with the the fencing arrangement that we've got now we'll show you that soon so we've got a little bit more time on our hands which is probably the first time since we've been here in three years and that's going to be put to good use to growing stuff right let me put my babcocks down and uh, we'll talk about the, the not so good stuff so yesterday at the tip to see all that stuff burning off and to smell it was 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 a bit of a shock for me. Uh, but the ramifications of that is what the heck do we do now with all our plastic? You know, mainly the, the, the plastic bags and bottles and also the, the stuff that won't get recycled such as uh, little milk cartons. Until we get our hands on a couple of dairy goats to produce milk for uh, our kid goats that haven't got a mum or the mums aren't producing milk we're getting through quite a lot of UHT milk cartons and we can't recycle them no one takes them we do recycle a hell of a lot of stuff about once a month we, we have about six huge rice bag fulls of, of stuff for recycling but it does leave us this so that's a that's not even a week's worth of bits and bobs so you know they won't take the, these sorts of things and of course it's the plastic bags if you've been to Thailand I dare say a lot of other countries nearly everything comes in a plastic bag or it's wrapped in plastic and then gets put in a plastic bag I haven't seen anywhere else like it apart from the work trips that I used to go out to in Nepal that that was that was by far the worst I've ever seen in my life that was Kathmandu was just, if you've ever been there, you'll know how it's howling and night time. If, you, if you're out in a car, you know, a lot of the cars there haven't got aircon, but you still keep all the windows up because a lot of the local people there are just making these little fires at the side of the road trying to, trying to keep warm. And the fires are just nearly all plastic. Dangers of burning plastic off. There's a long, long list. But, uh, but there's certain groups of stuff, so I'm, I'm not a scientist. I was, I was crap at science, actually. So uh, I'm going to cheat and use the phone to remind myself. Like anything in life, if we're not happy with something, then we should look into it and try and rectify it. Uh, obviously can't save the world from plastic, but I like to know what I'm up against and then see if we can do something about it. So here goes, here's some of the, the nasty stuff from burning plastic. In at number one, we've got hydrochloric acid. Even I know that's really bad for you. In at number two, sulfur dioxide. Then we've got a group of stuff called dioxins. Now I'll come to them in a minute. And we've also got furans. And to finally round things off, we've got a group of heavy metals as well. So all of those are released every time a plastic bag or bottle or something like that is burnt off into the atmosphere. So these emissions are known to cause respiratory disorders. So for me, I've got asthma, uh, but there's lots of other disorders out there, as you know. It puts stresses on the human immune system. Uh, to round things off, if you're thinking of having any kids, uh, don't stand around any burning plastic because the emissions from it can severely affect that as well. Dioxins are well known for heart disease disorders. Along with that, of course, they're uh, carcinogenic as well. So let's think about putting a bit of an action plan in together. So first off, we, we now take our own um, it's sort of like a woven material bag to the shop so every day we go to the shop now um, there's at least one bag that we don't have to to get rid of yeah, keeping the amount of plastic bags down to a minimum of course is a no-brainer uh, but what about all the stuff that comes wrapped in plastic bags like food items and other stuff that you buy so there's no point in taking stuff to the tip or if we were still in town or in the village putting stuff into um, bins. There's just no point. I mean, to see it being burnt off, just smouldering in, in in the middle of farmland is, is pointless. It got me thinking, well, how, how should we dispose of it? And some of it we've we've hidden, 
I don't mean in a bad way. So when we've had things built, if there's little voids left, then we've crammed as much stuff in there as possible. But of course, those, those places are becoming quite few and far between here on the farm now. So a lot of the time they're covered in concrete or cement. But quite a few years ago, when I was an instructor, for uh, when we used to do breathing apparatus work and sort of like uh, escaping, escape and rescue with BA, we went to a place called Port and Down. We used to teach the guys there at the incinerator compound. If you if you never heard of Port and Down, they've got things like VX there and anthrax and all that sort of thing. But they also dispose of ammunitions and they do tests on monkeys and all that sort of thing. Although I was never involved in that sort of sort of stuff uh, there's obviously quite a lot of waste uh, dodgy waste potentially dangerous waste that has to be disposed of so the incinerator played a huge role there and still does the key was to it was to get it as hot as possible the hotter it gets obviously the less emissions you know anything that's giving off a load of smoke uh, is giving off some bad stuff you know carbon carbon monoxide is obviously the is the main thing that people think of but it's all the other bits in there like the heavy metals and that that we're talking about so the dark sin and and fur on that sort of stuff we can keep it to a minimum if we get the, the fire really really hot there still will be some that's given off so that's what I do now guys I do hate it I'm gonna have a word with Toon today if if she can have a word with the mayor in the village and see about the possibility of a plastic bag recycling see if we can sort out something for that and uh, people can just drop off their plastic bags but I think even that's not going to be perfect because it won't get rid of the plastic bottles that can't be recycled it's like a giant hamster wheel god that wind's getting strong and cold let's try and get out of that yeah they use a, like a giant hamster wheel to put all the plastic bags in there and spin it round cleaning them well, that, well that's hooked up to a bloody diesel engine with a belt to spin it round so they don't run off electric this is <laughs> you're using I don't, you're using diesel to power something that recycles stuff I don't, I don't know about the efficiency of that I don't know it's something maybe we'll have a look we'll have a word with him maybe there's someone around here but we haven't seen it it's, sometimes, it's generally you see them on the side of the motorways these, these big hamster wheels spinning around with thousands of plastic bags in there yeah I mean if you've got any ideas um, or you know something that could be more more beneficial to the environment let us know in the comments guys it's something that we we absolutely hate well I certainly do and Toon's, Toon's getting into this sort of thing now as well so this is my fire it's my old original cone pit I get the fire going with the wood to start with get it roaring and then I drip feed the bits and bobs in here now there will still be you know contaminants in here but this is the only location on our land that we burn this sort of stuff off now. Sad, isn't it? It really is sad. Uh, and then once the plastic is almost done, we start to see a little bit of smoke, then I, 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 I drench it straight away, put it all out, so you don't get any smouldering at the start or at the end. Hopefully, I'm keeping the emissions down to, I wouldn't say an absolute minimum, but as best we can on our land. I say, guys, if, if you can give us, give us some pointers on what else we can do, I'd really appreciate that. I mean, just collecting rubbish, pushing it into a corner of a field. I like the idea of people recycling, you know, going through that and recycling stuff for themselves and making a few quid out here. But then just to push it to the side and and leave it smouldering is it's not ideal, is it? That's for sure. Other than that, I'm I'm quite a fan of how they do the recycling out here. You know, for people to make a full time living doing that, day in day out, the driving round picking up. You know collecting recycling from people that's that's great when we were walking around the the tip yesterday you you could hardly see anything there that could have been recycled most of it was you know pretty much beyond what what's possible so that was that was good and of course we got our hardwood as well for free but um yeah i'm a bit of a loss what else we can do so let us know guys cheers